When I first began doing robotic surgery, there was nothing more painful than doing a robotic ascending colectomy. One of the main reasons is because of bed positioning. I always messed this up. I was frustrated. The instruments weren't correctly positioned. The ports were messed up. And it all starts with patient positioning. So I want to cover that in great depth right now. When it comes to doing any case robotically, the bed must be meticulously positioned in an effort for you not to touch that bed during the case. Said another way, you want to do everything you can to set the table before you sit down to eat. Position the bowel laparoscopically, get everything positioned perfectly so that when you sit at the console, it is a frustration-free, very elegant and enjoyable operation. There is no set position for a robotic right colectomy. What I mean by that is a patient could be Trendelenburg, they could be reverse Trendelenburg, they could be left side up, they could be left side down. It really doesn't matter. There's no set rule as to how the patient should be positioned. The only steadfast rule that I will say is do whatever you have to do to get the bowel out of your face and to clear the iliocolic pedicle before you dock the robot. So position everything, place your ports laparoscopically, then laparoscopically position everything in such a way that your iliocolic pedicle is passively exposed. So on average, the patients in my operating room are typically a little bit of reverse Trinellenberg and a little bit of left side down. That's just the average patient, but again, it doesn't really matter. The reason I showed this graphic is for the SI folks, and this is critically important on SI. So I remember cases in which I literally could not dock the robe up because of a patient's extremely obese abdomen. And so what I learned very quickly was that Depending upon the direction in which the patient is facing, whether they're in reverse Trendelenburg or if they're in Trendelenburg, if I need to drop the bed and the bed literally won't go any lower, then the trick to actually drop the bed height, if the bed won't go any lower, is to slide the bed in the direction that the bed is pointing. In other words, if this case, the, patient is, the patient's feet is pointing towards the ground, then slide them to the floor. If in contrast, they're in the Trinellenburg position and their head is towards the floor, slide them towards the head and that will actually drop their vertical height and the center of gravity will go down and that will actually allow you to dock the robot. Far more critical on the SI robot and not so much on the XI, but it is still a good point. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up here is patient positioning. So my patients, they are always in a supine position, arms tucked. I don't always tape them at the chest, but it is always a good practice just for the routineness of the case for my OR staff. But the one thing I will say is, and especially on the SI system, that when you do position the patient, I always position the patient's umbilicus right at the break of the bed. So you can see right here is aligned with the break of the bed. And then what I do is I flex the patient. And what this flexion of the patient does is it increases the docking real estate that I have, the distance between the patient's subcostal margin and their ASIS. I've just increased this docking real estate by a significant amount to allow me to dock the more clunky arms of the SI robot onto this uh, compressed abdomen. Sometimes if they're just lying completely flat and, if you, uh, and you try to dock, it's very difficult because you don't have enough room. But if you open them up like this, that allows you far more real estate to dock. I hope this video was helpful. See you guys for the next one.